video from Colorado Chip Design. This is Rashid. Today we are going to start looking into CMOS transistor. So I know in the last overview I gave, I mentioned that I will look into um, or I will teach um, system very log and RTL and then we'll come into CMOS. But uh, then I started creating um, a video and I wanted to explain system very log and the net list together. And then I thought about, okay, within the net list, you need to talk about standards of library and all that. So thought we have to look into the transistor because the discussion of delay and some of the capacitances involved in the transistor, I think for those things, it's better to have some knowledge of CMOS transistor. So yes, I'm, I've, I've, I will start on transistor and um, a few videos on that. Then we will look into the building of um, some combinational circuits using transistor, then sequential circuits. So I think that discussion will be really important for you to understand the next stages, especially when we talk about the, the delays through combinational circuits and delays of the sequential circuits or setup time, hold time, and all of that. Okay. So anyway, if, if this is the first time um, you have clicked on my video, uh, then my videos are really linked to each other. Uh, so far, I have uh, taught combinational circuits and sequential circuits. So I've covered digital logic design. And now I'm going into uh, CMOS transistor. And after explaining that, then we'll start videos on the physical design. This, I will try not to go too deep into equations for current and um, other things within the transistor. I don't want to scare people. But at the same time, I want to give enough knowledge um, to the students um, so that they can really understand what's really going on at, um, at the bottommost level. Okay. So even if you are an RTL designer or um, your architect, and the whole building of integrated circuits is built on top of transistor. So transistor is the core piece and having some better understanding of the issues or how we are really um, transmitting that information is super important. As I started in the very first video that the information in um, logic design in, in the in integrated circuit it's basically a switch so you have this switch you can switch turn it on I mean connect it and turn it off just think of a light bulb okay and you can turn it on and off so turning on when the switch is on Let's say we call it logic low, okay? Um, because here a battery is connected. Okay, battery is connected in such a way that when we turn it on, uh, our electrons start flowing on this side. So this is positive terminal. Electron ha has a negative charge, so they will move this way. Current is always opposite side is always from positive to negative opposite side of the electron flow so current is then this side so when it's on the voltage across it if you remember since it's, sh it's shorter so voltage will be zero so think of like that when it's a zero we call it logic low and when it is open like this case so the same voltage appears here but since it's you know, it's not closed, no current flows. So the same voltage up comes here almost. And let's call this logic high. So even just with one switch, logic low is, um, logic low is zero. Logic high is one. So when you have one switch, you are making a zero and one. This is the two um bits these are the two bits so this is these are the two um information pieces that you can just send to somebody now if you have let's say three switches so what you can do you, what kind of combination you can have 
you can have zero 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 you have zero zero one you have zero one zero you have zero one one you have one zero zero one zero one 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 zero one 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 two three four five six seven eight and we have already seen these things in the logic design that's why i started logic design initially without explaining the the basics of the transistor so at higher level you can understand so you now understand how in the form of zero and one you can create a digital circuits which has some meaning in them so that you can transmit a useful information so if you have three switches like this by turning them on and off and having logic level zero and high or one you can send a uniquely eight set of information so if you have more switches you can send more information that's really the the core of of, of this um, binary information transmission thing phenomenon so you have seen that okay each switch is important okay that is the core thing now what about if if in our chip these days we call few uh, millimeter square area of the die and we have billions of transistors means billions of switches and how can you create those tiny switches um, billions of them in few mm square that you can efficiently turn on and off that's really the core of the problem or core of the the whole thing with the transistor how can you create a controllable a good controllable so that when you turn it off it's really off and when you turn it on it's really on it's like a constant current flows or a current flows that you can really control with this voltage you you increase the voltage current increases you decrease it current decreases i think that that's really the key here for the transistor operation so let's go from this switch and let's look into how our transistor is so think of the switch so on the one side this connection let's we have uh, we will talk about how you apply the voltages but actually let's let's look into here this is a better the second one this one look at this one please so just like a circuit i mean in in this case i created this maybe it's better to copy this thing I want to make it somewhere here but the smaller version so that you have it as there as, as a reference applied in this case so I'm just thinking can I rotate this Supply goes up. Okay, let's leave it like that. Um, I'll explain to you what I mean. So what we can do is just to show you exactly the same way polarity of the battery and everything. Um, oops. Let's turn it no not that one blue we have battery here so we have positive here we have zero sorry this would be thing would be zero anyway and our electrons will flow this side and our current flows this side positive to negative okay this this formation is fine now compare it to this thing this is our uh, cmos and mos and we will talk about within a cmos which is complementary metal oxide semiconductor or semiconductor we have n mos transistors and p mos transistors and why cmos is good why not some other technology we'll talk about it. but just think of that that the basic transistor is this and once you understand this thing, you will understand the other uh, PMOS anyway. So think of the transistor just like this thing. It's a switch. So it has this part connected um, to the negative side. And then it has uh, this side connected to the positive side. 
and this thing in a normal switch um, you have let's keep this is your third thing that you are controlling right by turning this thing on and off and here you have this gate which you use to turn it on and off and actually it's a relative voltage so here you can say in the voltage sense when you talk about you say when you apply a positive voltage this part is on the ground side so you can really control them this way and electrons when it's on electron needs to flow that side which means current flows that side so you, you hope you you got the comparison to the simple switch this thing this space here think of that we just don't want to have electrons flowing that side the only path of for electrons to flow is from there to this and also we'll talk about in this area uh, and that's where it's important that we don't have this connection directly to this part otherwise this will make strong fire so we really want to disconnect this path so we need to create an isolation here an insulation here so electrons are attracted but they don't go here this is not the path so we need to put this uh, think of insulation here or isolation here but we need to be able to control it so we apply the voltage here okay i think that's that's pretty straightforward so that's what we want okay we will talk about these these things uh the yeah i just mentioned that the other thing what we want is so we want a lot of electrons here we, we want to create like in a normal switch this is a conductor right when you close it start current start flowing and when it's off we don't want content to flow so we want to create a similar situation like this we want to have a tiny i mean here you see a big one but think of that on a five seven nanometer how tiny this thing is and i'll explain you what the length width of the transistor is or maybe right now is the time to explain that so distance from here to here now this is a two-dimensional and this is also our old kind of transistor not the latest one with the 3d and all that so i think that it's good for explanation purpose that we are turned towards the our old transistor um not a 3D and a two-dimensional picture. Once you understand that, then you can understand any new transistor structure. So the length of the transistor, what you typically call, what is the length of the transistor? It's like 10 nanometer, 28 nanometer, 40 nanometer, 32, 130 nanometer, 180 nanometer. That is really the length from here till here. Because that is the area where the, the the channel that's really the current flow which the area we want to control we don't want to have electrons moving this side or this side because it will be hard to control through gate the the narrower this this flow of the street there think of that there's a, the police here and they really want all the cars uh, go in this particular spot because they can watch them they can control the traffic if current flows here there is area they cannot control so they might go here they might go there or do something else they don't want to have that so police really wants all the cars to go from in this narrow area and that, that is a good analogy so we really want this one that is important and we want this area and this area to have generally like a conductor. Right? The conductor has a lot of electrons because it can conduct electricity. So we want to have the ability um, to have this area a source of a lot of electrons, a lot of electrons here. So one is on, shoot, a lot of electrons flow that side. If we have pretty less one, then this area will struggle to have enough. Or you can say that we need to have, if you want a lot of cars travel this side, you need to have a lot of cars parked over here. So as soon as you open these doors, everything goes. 
That's a good analogy, actually. Now, why this one? Because, you know, you really want to have continuous flow here. Electrons will flow here. So you really want to have a lot of traffic. So we want to have a lot of traffic when we want to have a lot of traffic. And when we stop this, these gates, or through this we will control, and police says no more, we don't want anybody to go there. That will be the, the good switch. And now if, if this guy wants it to be off, but it's still on, that's not good, right? So the key thing here is this is narrow. Okay, the other thing, the other important is, okay, this narrow, we need to have source of electrons here. And we don't have free electrons in this area. That's the third thing. So how many things did I need to mention? I didn't think about these, but I think it's a, it's a good way to explain this. One is, what was one of that? Yeah, a lot of free electrons in source and drain to narrow channel three no free electrons do, oops no free electrons under the channel area which i really mean here because we don't have want to have a traffic like this it will be less controlled they will waste so much energy going coming back which is not impacting us because we really want here okay. there's another thing the number four thing we don't want to have electrons going here we cannot afford to have this traffic because it will be hard to control so we try our best to have a kind of barrier here that's in our interest in order to make this road narrow and have a full control on this side this has to be blocked so this is called a depletion region and we depletion of the traffic or prohibited area whatever your word you call it uh, so this is uh, let's call the same terminology that we use for transfer depletion region Throw off. Okay, these are really the thing. I mean, maybe you mean you can mention other things. One already insulation or isolation between gate and channel. What is channel? So just making sure this is channel. Or I should write that. Okay, so that in future, if I draw something, I mention it here, channel. So these are the things we want to have in transistor. And how we create that, especially the one, how we create a lot of electrons here and there, how we can create this depletion region, how we can control the traffic through this, how to turn the traffic on and then have it keeps going continuously and when do we want to shut it off that's really in the transistor context how we achieve that that's really the heart of the the transistor operation so let's look into that um, few more things the next video and few more things i think it will take two three uh, 15 minutes videos um, to go over this topic Okay, I will see you in the next video. Hope what I explained so far makes sense and you, you understood that. Thank you. Bye.